I wanted to uh, pray for somebody that some of you know and some of you don't know. But Rachel led her to the Lord in the 1970s, early 1970s. She's from Philadelphia. And her husband is kind of the chief financial officer of the Messianic Jewish Alliance, meaning that he helps make sure that um, everything is kept on the up and up. And uh, his name is Hank Rich. Her name is Susan Rich. How many may know Susan Rich here? Okay, some of us do. So these are insidious things. And I look at Charlotte here and um, remember glioblastoma, brain tumor, that, that both her and the husband, Robert, and Hope Edelstein's husband, Howard, had. And this is similar. The outside um, natural course of it, you know, the medical course of it is about 16, 17 months life expectancy. And this is Susan Rich. She has a pancreatic cancer. And uh, it has spread to her liver. Uh, now, you know, you cannot do a transplant for pancreatic cancer. You can do a transplant for liver cancer, and uh, Jonathan Burniffs of uh, Jewish Voice Ministries uh, just had one. We pray that his body doesn't reject it and that he lives long and, and continues to be the blessing internationally that he is. But uh, they have not, on a natural level, I'm not talking about what God can do, but on a natural level, they have no solutions for pancreatic because it's too connected to other organs, both in the intestines and in other related organs near the pancreas. And so they haven't broken through as far as a, a uh, transplant is concerned. But God can do it. Amen. God can break through. Amen. Let's pray for Susan Rich. Lord God, Father, you have done miracles. Sometimes I see these things on CBN, extraordinary, supernatural, spontaneous, incredible miracles of healing that should not, by the doctor's explanations, happen. And that's what we're praying for Susan. She led Rachel, Rachel led her to the Lord in the 1970s. We've known her for that long. Her and her husband are very active in the Messianic Jewish Alliance. And she is a godly, spiritual, humble, sweet woman. Two wonderful children, Jason and Dana, and their families. And I'm just praying right now, Lord God, Father, for a miraculous, supernatural answer from you. Touch Touch this precious woman, Lord God, Father, who we all love, and do something out of the box for Susan Rich. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay. I'm also going to um, introduce our guest, singer, worship leader, amazing encourager of, of people, Sally O'Connor this morning. And we know Sally for a number of years. And uh, Sally is an extraordinary person. And uh, her songs and testimony reach right down into the heart. And uh, I know that everybody is going to be blessed by her ministry. So I'm going to ask Sally to come forward to be with us now. Thank you. By what she ministers, Lord God. Amen. And 
Shabbat Shalom. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, if they'll seek me with all their hearts and turn from their wicked ways, then Turn my face back toward them, and I will heal their land. Oh God, my God, how great is the darkness when brothers betray each other. Oh God, my God, how deep the divide When filled with our hatred and pride If my people who are called by my name Will humble themselves and pray If they'll seek me with the and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin. I'll turn my face back toward them and I will heal the land oh god my god we've hardened our hearts slow to forgive and dying to live oh god my god we've wandered away Lord, bring us back now, we pray. If my people who are will humble themselves and pray if they'll seek me with all of their hearts and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and I forgive sin I'll turn my face back toward them and I will heal their land then will I hear from heaven and I forgive their sin I'll turn my face 
back toward them and I will heal the land so the Lord kind of has put this on my heart to share this song each time. And um, it's a song that, you know, he, uh, he really inspired me to write during COVID. And because I saw this division and anger and separation and hatred, you know, come flowering out of the ground, you know, during this season of, um, loss and fear and everything that was going on. And, um, and his heart is that we would be one. His heart was, is that we would love one another, that we would see each other the way that he sees us. And it's difficult. It's difficult because we're so very human. We're not perfect and complete yet. Um, so I am a Jewish believer. Uh, my husband likes to refer to me as a <clears throat> messy antic Jew. Um, <laughs> but um, I grew up in a, a home that was more on the liberal side, I guess. You know, we went to the uh, high holy days um, my father was raised Orthodox and, um, for a lot of years we attended his mother's synagogue and, um, we would, you know, we would have a Passover Seder. We would celebrate Hanukkah, but really didn't even keep the Shabbat. Didn't really understand. Um, and, um, we lived for a long time in the Fairfax district, at least for me, the first eight years of my life. And it was a very sweet time. Um, the Fairfax district in Los Angeles is, was, is sort of <laughs> mostly Jewish area. And uh, my mom was into putting on fairy tale plays and everybody on the block had a part. And uh, I was the princess and I, I quite enjoyed being the princess. Um, I came to understand later there were certain references to being Jewish, American, and a princess. But, uh, you know, I had no issues with it. I enjoyed it. I think uh, we should savor those seasons in our lives that are sweet. When I was eight, we moved, and we moved to a very different part of huh, the Los Angeles area. San Fernando Valley and before I had a chance to make some friends something happened of a very different nature to me and I think we all have these moments in our lives things that happen almost out of the blue to us you know we don't see them coming and in that moment the thing that happens changes us forever and I think that it's human nature to want to go back to what was before the moment happened, but we really can't. That's just not the economy of God. And so how we go on is everything. So I was walking down the street and a man had his dog out, you know, and I asked if I could pet his dog. I asked all the right questions and I bent down in a moment. He ripped my face open and it took a hundred stitches to sew it back together. It took a month for me to heal enough to go back to school. And then at school, I was given the name Scarface. And that is what I grew into the meaning, the properties of the understanding that I was not good enough, that I was less than. 
that I was not pretty, that I was not valuable, that I was not of any worth. I was 27 years old, well versed in all those ways that come from being broken in that way. When I came to know the Lord. I was passed out and flat busted. Didn't hear the last call sound. Am I designated driver? Didn't bother sticking around. It took all the strength I had to lift my head and find my keys when a hazy looking stranger came and sat down next to me he was clearly out of focus as i nursed water chin i could tell some sorrows by the way he drank mine in and he told me I was beautiful waiting for that line I had wished he would hit the road and half wished he were mine Try for something to build me up, some kind of guarantee. If you've got a love that can set me free, won't you bury your heart in me we talked there on those bar stools so much pain and time to kill but the hours passed like moments till the clock was standing still and I swear if he'd have asked me, I'd have given him my soul. The more I emptied out my heart, the more he made it whole. Can it be something to fill me up? Some kind of guarantee. If you've got a love that can set me free, won't you bury your heart in wounded me? He talked about his children, he wore each one on his face. He told me how their broken lives had brought him to this place. He said, you know, it really seems the father's day is never done. Sometimes you leave the night to take care of the one he said surely you've got someone who would give his life for you as his face came into focus I said I believe I do I 
And I looked deep in his eyes, saw a thousand smoke-filled bars. Guess some of us have broken hearts, some have other scars. But I never noticed his, till the stranger took my hand. He said, now I hope my daughter, you'll finally understand. Find me something to feel some kind of guarantee. If you need a love that can set you free, won't you? In me, I am the love that can set you free when you bury your heart in. me Wounded and forsaken, I was shattered by the fall. Broken and forgotten, feeling lost and all alone. Summoned by the king into the master's courts. Lifted by the savior and cradled in his arms. I was carried to the table, seated where I don't belong, carried to the table, swept away by his love. And I don't see my brokenness anymore. When I'm seated at the table of the Lord, I'm carried to the table, the table of the Lord. Fighting thoughts of fear, wondering why he called my name, and I could not to share this cup this world has left me lame even in my weakness the savior called my name in his holy presence i'm healed and unashamed i'm carried to the table Seated where I don't belong, carried to the table, swept away by his love. And I don't see my brokenness anymore when I'm seated at the table of the Lord. I don't see my brokenness anymore when I'm seated at the table of my Lord. I'm
I'm carried to the table. To the table, table of my Lord. So when I first came to the Lord, um, I was pretty much a loner. I didn't do community. I didn't do people very much. You know, only particular people that I felt like I could relate to. But uh, I sat in the back of um, a church for about four years. Um, Didn't really want to connect with people or be touched or touch. I had been a leper for a long time and it was hard to come in from the cold. And, and if I could give a word to you guys about people who come in and are broken and unlovable and it's, it's good to, it's, it's good to approach gently. Not everybody is ready for a hug. (laughs) I did a lot of shaking hands for a long time and, uh, That was about all I could do, you know. But over time, you know, actually on Yom Kippur this year, it'll be 40 years. I, uh, I asked the Lord to come into my life. And, um, over time he began to work on my heart and help me to see myself more as he sees me. And in that process also to see other people more the way that he sees them, you know, and it is a process. I remember standing in front of the mirror and looking at my face and thinking the thoughts that I thought about myself and asking God to align my thoughts and my emotions to the truth of how he sees me. And I remember that process in my life being a step into the freedom that he has for me. And it's a continued process. But when it came to seeing people the way that he sees people, this was really even more difficult for me because people are, we, you know, we hurt each other. And so we immediately defend ourselves against the possible or potential hit or hurt, I should say. Yeah. Or hit. Yeah, that's good. Um, And, and, and the thing about wounded people who have been hurt repeatedly is they don't even know they wound other people in their act of defending themselves. They wound people. That's, that's how it goes. That's part of the thing. You know, I never knew that I hurt some of the people around me in the, in the fellowship I was involved in. Um, And there came a season where I needed to talk to them and make amends and ask their forgiveness. But there's a, a prayer in, in John 17 at the end of uh, Yeshua's high priestly prayer. And it's something that really has stuck out to me for a long time. And I, I think of it um, because I think that the business of loving one another, um, the way that he has loved us is an impossible, it's an impossible gig. I mean, it's only possible in the power of the Ruach, ha- the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> so he, he's praying for us. This is his last prayer, you know, and at the very end of it, um, forgive me, this is the NIV. Some people refer to it as the non-inspired version. But anyway, um, in verse 25, he says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Now, how many times we read and we just kind of go over and don't see anything. And I don't know how many years I spent reading through this passage and not really seeing 
But this is important. He says, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. You see, he's praying that the love the father has for Yeshua for himself would be in us because our love for Yeshua is fickle and petty and, and we don't sustain very well. And so he's praying for that stronger love, that love that is steadfast and holy and, and, and unconditional, the love the father has for his son, Yeshua, that that love would be in us for Yeshua. And if that love is in us, then we are able from that love to love one another. It is the love he has for us that makes it possible for us to love one another. My prayer is not for them alone, but for all who will believe in my words and receive one who won't forsake or leave. My Father, just as you are in me, May they be also in us That the world may see All that it can be When they love each other As you have loved me my prayer is they will live in us as I'm in you and you're in me. May they find unity as the Spirit set them free. My Father, just as you are in me, may they be also in us that the world may see all that it can be when they love each other as you have loved me this is the witness that you sent your son and love them like you love me and do not condemn and as we are one Abba let them become that your heart for me is also in them just as you are in me may they be also in us that the world may see all that it can be when they love each other as you have loved me when they love each other as you have loved me when they love as you have loved me. So part of the process for me 
in learning to love began with my father. And I think it, I never think these things are a coincidence. I, I think it's very interesting that the drosh was about forgiveness. I did not grow up with forgiveness in my family. We did not do forgiveness. We do, we did, and, and my family still does actually. <laughs> we did grudges really well. <clears throat> we kept them to the grave. That's how good we were. I remember there was a friend of my mom's and they were best friends. They were friends for 30 years and she did something my mom didn't like. They had talked about <clears throat> not giving each other gifts anymore because they gave each other very expensive gifts um, because they were both kind of artistic in their outlook on life. And my mom said, no more, you know, and I don't know what the reason was, but and she had the same name as my mom, which was Betty, you know. And uh, one day Betty gave a gift. And that was the end of the friendship. I had to call Betty and tell her my mom had passed on. We are very good at keeping <clears throat> grudges. I didn't really know any better when I came to the Lord, but the Lord began to educate me, you know. And uh, one day I was sitting with my father at my mom's house. They had separated. And uh, we were having a, a meal and we were talking. And um, my father and I had a very bad history. When I was little and my brother and I were in the house with my dad on Sundays when he was not working. Um, he was a florist. Um, my dad would lose his temper at some point during the day. We would do something that would be completely frustrating to him. And um, he would almost like change face and the rage would overtake him. And um, his instrument was a belt and buckle. And I hated my father for that. I hated him for a long time. And every time I would talk with my father, I would get in an argument with him because I wanted my pound of flesh back. But this one particular day, we were sitting in the house and this was about a year after I'd come to faith. And we were having a conversation and it was quickly devolving into an argument. And I was excited because every, every opportunity that I could argue with my father and hurt him with the words that I said was a, a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing for me at the time. Excuse me, little hair. <laughs> And I caught myself realizing how much I wanted to fight with him. And in that moment, I felt like God said something to me. Very simple. Is that what your faith is about? I excused myself and I went in the other room. And the Lord was so good to me. Um, he helped me see my father in a way I hadn't seen him in years. He helped me think about my father as a human being. You know, the kids on the block would call my father the monster and they would not come over to the house when uh, my father was home. And that day I felt like the Lord invited me to see the man in the monster. And he invited me to love the man. And we wrote this song for my dad um, as our relationship healed. Because I realized that I wanted to see my father at the end of time. At that table that people portray. At the table the scripture talks about. The wedding feast of the lamb. 
I wanted to see my father there, and it surprised me that I even cared, you know, but I, I did. I do. And so um, we wrote this song for my dad. And uh, I can say that um, that forgiveness and that love and that healing was an instrument in his asking the Lord into his life and a change in my father that I could not have imagined. So if there's somebody that you love or somebody that you like and they don't know the Lord, they have never encountered him, maybe you could be praying for them while I'm singing the song. And maybe there's somebody that you don't like. You consider them an enemy and maybe you have good reason. But God's heart is that none would perish. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So loved, so much bigger than our love. So as I'm singing this song, ask the Lord to help you love. I'll be praying. So here we are again, another Sunday dinner. I bought the best rosé that I could find. But the silence, like the bottle, breathes between us. We both know I've got much more on my mind. Rather sit and talk to me about the weather and how the souls have lately got you down. But when I start to talk about forever. I know you're getting picture without sound. I just want to see you there. Please don't ask me not to care. I don't want sit at his table next to an empty chair I just really want to see you there I know that you don't really think I'm blind or crazy Sometimes I believe that I must be. What kind of lunatic throws out all reason and gives her life to someone she can't see? I wish I had more faith. So I can just let go Oh, shut that composure to pretend But I think the time is short And yes, I'm scared I need to know we'll meet again I just want to see you there 
please don't ask me not to care I don't want to sit at his table next to an empty chair I just really want to see you there so in a quiet moment won't you ask him if he's real then reach out and touch his face I just want to see you there please don't ask me not to care I don't want to sit at his table next to an empty chair I just really want to see you there I just really want to see you Amen. I want to close with a song I wrote a few years ago and is on our new album. And I want to explain that rose. So the Lord planted a seed in my heart when my father um, and I were reconciled. Um, he showed me the power of forgiveness. I, I, I saw my father change in such a huge way. It, it really kind of blew my mind, you know. But it planted a seed in me that forgiveness, like I said, is really powerful. And the way that we look at people and events is not the way that God does. And that if we're walking with him, then we, we, we need to let his view inform and change our view. And if we believe him, if we trust him, if we love him, you know, like we say, you know, we say the things, we sing the songs, but real life is a little different. So in 2009, um, the Lord led me into a project that I call a tour of roses hence the rose. And, um, and the first place he called me to bring this project was Germany. And we brought roses, long stem red roses to the people in the town of Dachau, to the people in the town of Bergen, to the people in Poland, in the town where Auschwitz, Auschwitz is. The town is called Auschwitz, actually in Polish. And the roses each had a card and the card said on the rose in the language of the country, a rose of remembrance, red for the blood of the people who died, red for the savior's blood, which was shed for all red for his perfect love, which removes all fear, making it possible to love one another. There were people who just, hugged us and people who cried and people who rejected and one guy who spat on one of my teammates because she's Jewish and he's um, probably was an ex Nazi. But we went and loved people and we went and we prayed and worshiped in the camps near each city, near Bergen, near Dachau, near Auschwitz in 
in Zeppelin Field, in Nuremberg, in Berlin, in uh, Ravensbrück, and I mean, in Sobibor, in, in so many different places, the Lord gave us grace and favor to worship and pray on the streets of the towns and in the camps and to pray for the healing of the land and the people and the families who lost people. In 2016, I led a team <laughs> being an ex loner, but still, you know, in the process, I led a team of 16 other people to um, Jerusalem and Bethlehem. And we gave out 7,500 roses, especially to the Palestinians at that time. You know, and, and this is the thing, you know, the Lord has taken me in different places, you know, worshiping in front of an abortion clinic, and asking me the question, do you love the people who are inside the clinic as much as you love the babies and the women? Do you love the boyfriends and the husbands? Because you see, he does. He, he loves them and he wants to show his love to them. But you see, we, our judgment, our understanding, all these things get in the way of that love. He's well able to bring conviction where, where conviction has to happen. But we stumble and stutter to bring forth the love with which he has loved us. So he called us to give these roses to the Palestinians and, and we were scared. We did a lot of praying. We did a lot of, you know, pulling it together before we went. And I still can visualize stepping out of the Palestinian hotel that we were staying in with Muslims who were reporting on us to the mosque, stepping out on the street and going, I don't know how this is going to go, you know, with the roses. And the Palestinians stopping traffic in front of the hotel to receive a rose. Several of them later in the trip, actually praying and asking the Lord into their lives. This year we're going to Israel. I felt like the Lord said, bring the roses to the broken heart of Israel. So we will be doing that, God willing, and I think he is very willing, <laughs> in September. And for those of you who um, are at all interested about this trip, um, certainly you are welcome to talk to me afterwards at the table. And... Um, I have a group of people praying. We've been praying since um, October. And I am assembling a team very prayerfully. I don't pick the people who go. I, I just let people come to us and then our board and myself, we pray. Who is it that God wants to be on this team? In that uh, very eclectic group of 16 people, 17 with me, there were two Palestinian believers fluent in Arabic. There were half a dozen Jewish believers. There was a couple of Polish ladies, a uh, German guy that one of the Polish ladies was a little uncertain about. Uh, there was a friend of mine who's fully Native American. We couldn't have been more diverse, I think, you know all kinds of personalities. But God knows what he's doing. And he brought us to a place of loving one another. Amid a war of words, the Prince of Peace is calling. One day he will be heard by all the poor in spirit. 
the blind too long to see those who live in darkness everyone who will be Yeshua HaMashiach Adam HaKabur Desire of the nations Promised one of old Moshiach HaOlam He was pierced for our transgression his blood bought release He became a peace Sa Shalom Sa Shalom Left unfulfilled, the voice of God is sounding, stirring all who will rebuild. In long forgotten places, in willing wounded souls, there will be a planting of the hope that makes us whole. Yeshua HaMashiach Adon HaKavor Desire of the nations Promised one of old Moshiach HaOlam He was pierced for our transgressions his blood bought release. He became a peace. Sa shalom. Sa shalom. We raised up in our hurt and fear, opened eyes and ears, so we could finally see and hear the love that heals the broken heart of man. Yeshua HaMashiach Adon HaKavor Desire of the nation Promised one of old Moshiach HaOlam He was pierced for our transgression his blood bought release. He became our peace. Sa shalom. Sa shalom. Shalom.